Uh, again, my name is Greg, uh, Greg Avalos, as you can see on the screen there. Um, this is a training webinar, so we're going to be discussing some of our you know, top three quality assurance and coaching quick tips today. Uh, as we said, or as I kind of said earlier, we've got about a half hour to present this material. I'm going to leave about 15 minutes to the end to answer any questions that come up. And uh, those questions, of course, because your microphones are muted, uh, if you have that Q&A box in the webinar, feel free to type in there if anything comes up. If you've got anything for me, I will read them out, uh, see if we can get answers for anything that you've got uh, when we approach the end of the presentation. So uh, without any further ado here, let me go ahead and dig into what we're going to be talking about today. And that, of course, is uh, top three quality assurance and coaching quick tips. Now, a lot of this is really we're going to be dealing with efficiency today. Uh, automation and efficiency basically going down those paths as to how can I get the system to do things for me that, uh, you know, I would typically go through and do manually. And we'll go ahead and advance the slide here. And let's see what we can find out next. And actually, the next slide is going to kind of give us the overall benefits of these modules. And the point here is we don't really know who the invites went out to. You may or may not have quality or coaching. So I kind of want to give you a high-level overview of what the overall benefits by module actually are. Uh, in case you don't have quality, of course, the quality program is designed to take a, a call, any call that may be in your system. Uh, you build in an evaluation form, and you would then take that call and evaluate it against that evaluation form, ultimately ending up with a score that allows you to, um, as the slide says here, kind of align your business needs and uh, customer satisfaction by driving change through evaluations. And that's really what it boils down to. A good quality process is, uh, is designed to do those factors exactly. Now, kind of moving down here, of course, uh, ensuring consistency with the unified evaluation process, that kind of goes without saying. Uh, we have a lot of environments, or I've been to environments where um, uh, things are kind of, uh, everybody does something a different way. Uh, if you have a unified form in the system, or you have multiple forms for different types of tasks, it, it creates it so that it's available to everybody to use and kind of um, unifies that process. Now, coaching is kind of the next step in that. If I've got quality and I do an evaluation, how do I then coach to those behaviors? As we can see here, we've got a centralized storage and management of learning content. So essentially, it's a learning management system. I load content into the coaching, and I can then distribute it, which is the next point down, quick and efficient dis distribution of content to individual users or groups of users. So I can then say, okay, great, um, you know, here is a module on how to uh, communicate uh, with the customer, uh, those types of things, or proper procedures, or things for compliance reasons. We can uh, attack all of those through the coaching module and hopefully, uh, you know, get everybody on the same level as far as that goes. Now, reporting is kind of the last piece of that wheel. If I've got quality, I've got coaching, I'm recording things, that brings me to where can I get some information about what's happening within my environment. And that's what we see here. We've got quality reports. Those reports deliver results down all the way down to the question level, and that's individual questions on those evaluations. We've also got the coaching module and reports, of course, for that. It allows for the reporting of scores, uh, for you know, SCORM compliant coaching modules that have quiz elements and, and factors, uh, scores like that. We also can see how long someone spends in those uh, through the reports, and also what's been completed, completed and what hasn't been completed. So kind of overall benefits by module, things you may want for quality coaching or reports. Next slide is going to kind of show us the, the overall process, or I'm sorry, the, the entire suite here. Uh, what we see on the far left-hand side at the top is a kind of a screen capture. Basically, it tells us we can capture screens. We can see what's happening while an agent is taking a call. We, of course, see at the bottom a little waveform. This tells us that we're recording the audio. These are kind of the fundamental pieces of, of our software, but it by no means is the, is the core of what we do. It's kind of the base level. We capture, we record, we can capture virtual agents, human agents. We then assemble interactions of these. So we take the calls and the screens and we put them together, or various pieces of calls, you know, where the hold time is taken out of the middle, put them together, those kinds of things. Now, we come across these little chevrons headed out towards the right-hand side, fact finder and analytics. You know, with that component, which is not something we're really talking about today, but it's there. We can watch your screen, gather information off of it, uh, sales dollars, uh, uh, when you enter a PCI compliant field, uh, various things that we can do through an API or, you know, kind of watching the screen. That allows us to, to take some action on those, those uh, things or report on them. Next over, of course, classification. 
moving further out, discovery and reporting. That's a lot of what we're going to be talking about today. Precision monitoring, also what we're going to be talking about today. You know, uh, and targeted coaching, another piece of the, the pie that we're going to be talking about here as well. So let me jump past this slide and we'll dig in here. There we go. Here's the three things we're going to be talking about today. We've got three quick quality assurance and coaching tips. Number one, creating a business rule to automatically select calls for QA. We'll see kind of the benefits as we move through the slides. Number two, triggering coaching from QA evaluation forms. So automated coaching right off of a question. And three, scheduling reports so that you don't have to come in and continuously run a report every week. The system can automatically do it for you. As I kind of said earlier, we're talking about efficiency and automation. That's what these are kind of targeted towards. All right. I'm going to jump down here. We're going to take a look at that first one, creating a rule to automatically select calls for QA. In uh, vPortal or the Empower Suite, uh, we basically have a section under the Administration tab that says Business Rules. Uh, in those business rules, uh, they're basically defined to automate certain tasks. And that could be anything from you know, extending class of service to uh, adding a flag to certain recordings and to this one, which is one of my favorites. Yeah, basically, I'm going to look for a call. I'm going to automatically distribute it to my group of evaluators, and they're going to go ahead and have their tasks already there for them. So as we can see, kind of the benefits. I can automatically schedule them. Every week, I want to grab two per agent, send them off to my team. Variable schedule for distribution, it's completely flexible. Once I turn on the rule, I can set my schedule. Maybe I want it to look every Friday, every other Friday, every Monday, you know, whatever it may be. This also removes the hunt and peck, and you notice the quotes there, you know, uh, from the evaluator's day-to-day -day duties. And, I, you know, it always, it always kind of makes me wonder, how much time am I wasting by looking for things to evaluate? And of course, there are multiple out-of-the-box business rules and the ability to create custom rules with uh, professional services engagement. So these rules, these automated rules, can go beyond this. Uh, basically, we can build, well, now I'm not going to say everything you want, but almost everything. <laughs> I'm going to jump onto the next slide here, and we're going to take a look at what this looks like, screenshots. And then I'm actually going to bring up the product, and we'll take a look at walking through setting up one of these rules. So here we are. This is the screen, basically, as I had said, under the Administration tab, we have the Business Rules section. When you get in there, it's going to look just like this. We have a series of templates along the left-hand side. Those templates can be crafted into rules by using your new rule selection here. And it's going to then take you through a wizard, kind of asking you about these fields. I want to show you this wizard, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. All right, let's see. Toggle screens, and there we have it. So this is actually our Empower Suite. We're looking under the Administration tab, Business Rules section, and you'll see a lot of those templates on the left-hand side, as, we had, as I had mentioned. The one I have selected here is Select Agents by Group for an Evaluator Group. And I'm going to go ahead and launch into that wizard so we can see what it looks like. There we go. Let me get this out of the way, and there we have it. There's a description. Use the rule to automate selection of agent evaluations. All active agents in the selected group will be scheduled for an evaluation, and you can then ship it off to the evaluators. Let's take a look at the fields that are available. Clicking Next brings me into my first selection. I want to select the group that I'm looking for people to evaluate. So if I've got a group out there, let's say my credit and collections group, I want to evaluate those people who are in that group. Clicking Next brings me through, configuring the evaluation. Select the evaluation form to be used, and I'm going to take Inbound Care. Sounds good. We're an inbound call center. I'm doing credit and collections. Great. Actually, well, yeah, collections might be outbound, but regardless. Randomly distribute to people that have the following role. So this is going to tie back to administration. Anybody who has a role where they can perform an evaluation is going to show up, or these roles. Quality Analyst. Manager. Super user, yeah, let's go with quality analyst. How many evaluations are be scheduled for each agent? I'm going to say two. And how many days do I want to give my evaluators to complete it? I'm going to give them a business week. So I'm going to say it within five days. I'm going to schedule it for you. Maybe at the end I'll, I'll do it on a Monday. And within five days I want those completed. Clicking next takes me to the next section of configuring the rule. 
select the time of day this rule is to run. I want it in my off hours. I don't want it running in the middle of the day when everything's busy and there might be people working within my system. So I'm going to say 2 o'clock a.m. And I'm going to give it a description here. Select agents by group for eval group. Sure. Or I can call it, uh, yeah, Greg's business rule. Perfect. And I click finish. Now the, the screen refreshes. Underneath my template is now my rule. I have an activate checkbox here, or active, and I also have the ability to edit my schedule. I'm going to edit the schedule so we can see what that looks like. Rule runs when active, or rule runs on the following schedule. I'm going to say it runs on the following schedule, and I'm going to set it to run oh, every Monday through June. I'm going to click the Monday at the top, or I could select individual days. But I'm going to say every Monday. And there we go. All I would have to do at this point is activate the rule. It would go out looking for anybody in credit and collections, and it would distribute those evaluations to anyone who has the role of quality analyst. So there's that rule for us, or quick tip number one. Let me toggle back to the presentation here. There we have it. As we can see at the bottom, it's available in version 5. So if you're 5 or better, this is there for you. And I'm going to click through to the next slide. So triggering coaching from QA evaluation forms is kind of our second tip. Here we go. Basically, it says it allows for the automatic delivery of coaching based on the outcome of questions answered on evaluations. So this is built into an evaluation form. That evaluation form can have actions tied to them when I answer certain questions. Improved agent development through targeted coaching. So if you miss this question, we want to deliver this coaching module to you so you can get better at that. And of course, skills-based agent training ensures progressive agent development. And that's really what it's all about. We want to get everybody to that same level. That's the, the, the point of coaching, of course, is to, to have, again, unified. I'm going to keep using that term. We want to unify our, any customer's experience coming in or, you know, depending on your environment, what, whatever it is, we want it to kind of be the same. All right, let me toggle through to the next slide here. Again, we're going to see a screenshot about this particular rule. So triggering coaching. What I'm looking at up here is my evaluation form. How much did the agent know about the customer's issue? This is a, well, it's a range score. So I've got a five in here, and I can then add the action. We see down here, of course, perform coaching. Select that. Whenever the action is below the goal. Now I set my goal to eight. So if this is a five, it's going to push this because I'm below my goal of eight. And there we go. How to rate yourself in VPI, just a, a module in there. Let me bring this up. I'm going to bring it up on our, uh, the product again. There we go, Empower Suite. Toggle over to our form designer here. And yes, I want to continue. There we go. Here's my form designer. This is actually a live form in our system. This could be used for evaluations. You'll see here, the top one already has an action tied to it. So I'm going to use the next one, acknowledge the customer's initial request with a positive response. I'm going to click my Add Action. This brings me into the Action Wizard, just like we saw on the, the static screenshot. And I'm going to say, OK, I want my goal to be yes. Great. If I'm below that goal, or if I get a no, to kind of put it in simpler terms, then I'm going to choose an action here. And in this case, we're talking about coaching, so I'm going to perform coaching. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to find a module that ties back to communication because this is acknowledging the customers uh, with a positive response. So in here is a communications one. I think it's on page two. Let me scroll up to the top. And oh, it's in here. So let's go with e-coaching training. Once I've tagged that, select OK that action is going to show up on my form. My evaluators are not going to know that this is here. As, I, as they go through and do evaluations, I mean, unless you tell them, of course, but as they go through and do evaluations, as they check that no box, this is going to trigger and send off that coaching module to whatever user this, this is being evaluated. So again, automation, efficiency, not having to do this yourself manually. All right, moving along, because I know I'm, you know, I like to talk and I'm short on time, so let me toggle back over to the presentation here. There we go. Take a look at uh, tip number three here. And this is the scheduling of reports. 
Uh, talking about some benefits for this, um, you know, if you run a report and you run it every week or you, uh, you run it all the time, you want to be able to automate this function so that you don't have to continuously do it. Uh, you know, everything that we have to do over and over, of course, takes up our valuable time out of our days. So, allows for the scheduling and automatic running of reports. Reports can be delivered overnight and can be delivered to multiple recipients. We can reduce our network load by running intensive reports off hours. So if I'm running a huge one, a year's worth of data, I'm going to go back and analyze that. I want to run that in off hours. I don't want to take up the system's resources during uh, our, our heavy time. Reports can be delivered as either PDF or Excel, as we can uh, do with other reports in the system. And of course, moving into the static screenshots here. So we're looking at something called Robin's Report. This is that particular report. She's already got it configured. She's got some data in here. What she's done is clicked Save Report and selected the Schedule box here. So the Schedule box brings up this particular report uh, window here, and we're going to see this better in the system. So let me go ahead and toggle over to that. Bring this back up. I've got an Evaluation Summary Report. I've already configured my filters here. I selected a time range. I've got a year's worth of data, selected groups. Uh, this is for finalized uh, quality evaluations only. And I pulled them all up into my report. So I get my score and all this good stuff. Maybe I want this report every week so that I don't have to run it every year or, or once a month. First of the month, I want to walk in and have this already in my inbox. That's where this becomes a valuable uh, tool here. Let me roll up the filters so we can see what the report looks like. And we're going to click Save Report. Save report, give it a name. Again, I'm going to go with my old standby, Greg's report. Give it a description, um, report for scheduling purpose. Fantastic. Now the next box is the critical one here, schedule report. Fantastic. Export PDF or Excel. Um, I'm going to do some data manipulation on this one afterwards. So I'm going to send it to myself in Excel format. I'm going to send it via email, so I've got that box checked. And I'm going to send it to myself here. I want to schedule this weekly. So every week I get it, and start date, I want to say, oh, I'm going to start receiving this report on Monday. So there we go. I can give it an end date, of course. If I want this to stop at some point in time, I can certainly do that. Otherwise, it's going to keep scheduling it and running it for me. And finally, when I click Save Report, it's going to bring me back to here, but I'll find my report actually under my Quality Reports, and it should be over here on the right-hand side. So if I want to come back in, edit my schedule, which is right here, this blue checkbox on the date field tells me it's been scheduled, or I can delete it if I don't want it anymore. So very basic functionality as far as the scheduling the reports go. This works within uh, several different reports in the system, anywhere that we have reports, interactions reports, uh, again, coaching reports. As we dig into these, we can find out uh, you know, that we have this, this feature. Uh, oops, didn't mean to actually dig in there. But <laughs> so other than performance reports, performance reports don't actually have these features. We, we do see them in the other sections of the system. So that being said, that brings us back to our presentation. And I think we're nearing the end. And I'm actually a little ahead of schedule, so maybe I talk too fast. But let me go ahead and uh, do this here, scheduling reports. Thank you, questions. So I did have one come across as I was kind of uh, talking through there. And uh, it says, how do I ensure the coaching delivered by a quality question does not get sent too often? And that's a great question. So let me bring back up the system here. So in our coaching, when we take a look into our module explorer, and we look at these individual coaching modules, um, let's just take call taker coaching quiz. I want to go ahead and edit this. And I can see in here, oh, oh it expires max time. OK, it's actually under the activities. Let me dig into the activities explorer. OK. When that activity is uh, created, basically when we start that activity, we get a relevancy days uh, uh, box here. And the relevancy days basically tells me 
how long it is before I can send this same module again. So to kind of answer the question, how do I ensure the coaching delivered by quality does not get sent too often, you can enter a relevancy date. If I enter 10 in here, if this, if this, uh, if, well, let's go back to the evaluation. If the evaluation is answered no five days after I sent the last one, then basically it's not going to fire this off again for another 10 days because I have a relevancy date in here. So great question. Thank you very much. All right, let's toggle back over. Let's see what we've got here. Toggle this back. All right, how does the user receive the coaching? Another excellent question. And again, let me bring up the screen here. And let's take a look through here. There's a few ways you may receive coaching. Of course, uh, one would be on your ticker. If you are using agent tickers and you're in your environment, you may see that uh, coaching module pop in there as an, as an outstanding coaching. coaching. Uh, the other places you're going to see it, if you have dashboards enabled in here, we certainly have widgets where you can see pending coaching activities. Options, edit my VPI, add a widget for it. Let's take a look for coaching widgets. I'm going to uncheck the rest of them. And, all right, let's go system, there we go, there they are. So, coaching activities, and let's go to page two, my to-do coaching assignments. So, on their dashboards, if I push a module out, like I did to myself here, Colorado DMV, I can start this. I start it, it takes me right into the coaching module. Other places I can see this information, I should have the same pending under my quality, and my coaching section. So three places, your ticker, your widget, and your my coaching screen. There we go, Colorado DMV, again with a start link to launch me right into it. Good question. All right, let's take a look and see what else we've got in the Q&A box here. Ah, okay, next section, how do we track that the employee took the coaching? G great question. Uh, what you can kind of see here as we dig into our activities is assigned to and completed. We also get this information in reports, so we can take a look at a module, see who it was assigned to, see who it was completed. Now again, this is a coaching administrator's view, so I get to see what's, uh, you know, the, the overall view of what's happening with these modules uh, that I'm shipping out. Let's dig into here. The other place, of course, is in the reports. Activity status, so if I sent an activity out, for instance, I saw Colorado DMV there, I can see that it was listed here, it was assigned, well, in this case it doesn't show up. But uh, any one of these, I see my learners, not attempted, incomplete, activities completed, and I can drill down into these and see who this was assigned to and who actually did it, how long it was uh, they spent in there. So Mike was in here for 11 seconds, didn't finish it. Amanda was in here for four, or Lynn, uh, completed it. So there we go, that's another great question. All right, scrolling down further through the questions. Okay. A great question. All right, can a report be scheduled to several recipients at once? Yep, let me toggle back over to where we were. So I'll go back into our, I'm going to use quality reports again. I'll bring up my report because that's the one we already scheduled. Let me go ahead and uh, bring that screen back up again here. Oh, I'm, it's already there. So let me go ahead and edit it. Quality reports, edit my schedule, current schedule, edit schedule, fantastic. Email address, exactly like Outlook. If I've got multiple recipients I want to send this off to, I enter in uh, uh, a comma, move forward with my, uh, with my information so I can send it to someone else. and it should fire off to multiple people. Again, it's going to set, retain the same schedule weekly, starting on the 11th. It's going to ship it off to, uh, to both of us Gregs here. All right. Okay. This one kind of ties back to what we had mentioned about the coaching. Where does coaching show up? Well, if I'm using a rule to automatically assign evaluations, where do those show up? Very similar to the places I had talked about with the coaching and how they show up. We can see those under our evaluations, what we have pending for ourselves. We also have the ability to head under our dashboards, and much like the My To Do coaching assignments, there is one for quality as well. 
So if I have outstanding quality, let's filter my list again. Oops. There we go. All right. We should see a my to-do evaluations as well, evaluation tasks. So I'm scheduling evaluations automatically via a business rule. They're going to show up here in my evaluation tasks. And just like my coaching, I'm going to have the ability to click on one of those and automatically launch into that evaluation. So there we have another good question as far as that goes. And we can also push these to your ticker. If, the, if you have quality agents or I'm sorry, quality, quality analysts who are doing their, uh, that, that uh, function, we can show that in the ticker. You have five pending assignments. Click on the link. It will bring you through to them. You can then go ahead and start evaluating from there. So, good questions. All right, I've got a couple more in here, and uh, let's see. All right, we've got another question about coaching kind of overall. So let me bring back up our coaching, Coaching Module Explorer. So I kind of mentioned in one of the overall benefit slides when we started that coaching is a learning management system. It's a repository for documents for me to store for ease of distribution uh, at later times. You know, as we take a look through our list, you know, if I've got something that I want to send out uh, to my agents, say, okay, great, here's a customer service skills enhancement. I've stored this in here. Uh, basically, I've loaded a module into my coaching, and it's now available for use for me to distribute it out to, to uh, people in my organization. So here is a module. I've loaded it in using my Actions new module. This is all you know, behind the scenes stuff where we did this before. And now I want to assign it off to other people. So I've got a repository. I've got a document. I think it's valuable information to share with a, an agent or another person in my organization. I would then create an activity, send it off to a group, a single user, and uh, go through this. And hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit better understanding of what coaching does. And coaching is really just the sharing of information. Uh, you know, I've got documents, I've got knowledge, procedures. Uh, it could be anything down to, uh, you know, yearly uh, safety reviews or monthly safety reviews. You know, these kinds of things that you can distribute out quickly and easily to, your, to the agents or uh, other people in your organization. So hopefully that helps. All right, I think I've actually reached the end of my questions list here. Um, I don't know, let's see here. Let me take a look. Making sure I answered all the questions here. Going back through my list. All right. Looks like I got everything. Um, anybody in the Q&A, uh, if you have anything else, certainly send them on through. Um, if not, I, I think uh, we are kind of at the end of the, the, the presentation here. Let me toggle back over to the presentation uh, so we can see that, that window again. There it is. And again, that was our, uh, our three quick tips on the, uh, you know, how you can automate and uh, be more efficient with using the VPI Empower Suite. All right, well, we should uh, be hosting more of these as we go forward. Uh, I do apologize it ran a little short today. Uh, it's, it's actually our first one, so thanks for being a part of that. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get another one going soon, and we'll certainly notify you when we do. Uh, in the meantime, any questions, anything like that, you can always come back to us. Uh, you know, we are here to, uh, to help you out and support you. Uh, if you're interested in these products, we can certainly help you with that too. So. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, and have a great Thursday out there.